Gathered friends, welcome back to a very, very special uh, Bionicle Day celebration, where we are gathered here today to give our thanks to one wonderful, wonderful man in the sky. That, of course, is Greg Farshti, the writer of Bionicle, Ninjago, Lego Magazine, editor, that is, and many other things. I am your host, Chip, and today I have with me a whole smorgasbord of guests. We have Liam. Hello. We have Josie. Cats are and always will be. Fantastic. I agree. We we have James. Hello, lads. We have Swert. Hello. We have Gonal. Hi. We have LJ. Hello. And Messanak. Hello, hello. And of course, Taraganuva. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hey. Okay, so, everybody here today to celebrate good old Greg. I... I, when you when you were bringing up, the when you were, like, introducing at the beginning, the first thing I did, just went through my mind was the song at the end of Gathered Friends G1, <laughs> and I almost, like, broke out laughing while you were doing the introduction. <laughs> the first thing on my mind was Greg's in the sky. Yeah, right, it's like, <laughs> hold on. Greg Did something is else in happen? the sky <laughs> with diamonds. Greg's just He's not dead. I just want to clarify slush, that. Slush. So, wait, okay. If Greg is levitating, that means he'd be wearing a Miru, which means I'm in good company. LJ, no. <laughs> no, silence. No, LJ. I no, 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 it was no, more no, of an no, astral no. projection, given that he was <laughs> no, taking no, out no. the entire We've got an sky. Iden. OMG, Greg is an Iden confirmed. Uh, Greg is the <laughs> Anika <laughs> mask. <laughs> No, no, no. Great, great, great beings don't wear masks, so he actually stole LJ's mirror. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you say great beans or Greg beans? Greg <laughs> beans? Mm. What's the I thought you. Did you say Greg beings or Greg beans? <laughs> Wow. What's the, uh, what? What's I think the difference? We have a new emote beans. idea. Craig <laughs> Bean. <Beans. laughs> oh, or a title. Hey. We're already this... starting off at the right foot. I'm just reminded Absolutely. of this Twitter trend a while ago. People just stuffing things full of beans. Like, <laughs> like Dungeons yes. and Dragons dice. Or like, I don't know, shoes. Beans in places hey. they shouldn't be, yeah. yeah. I've so, tried very hard. Can, can we just, can we just get a picture of, of Greg Farr? like at a con with like one of his fans but the fan is just replaced with a giant can of beans <laughs> I uh I, yes. I'll do that I've got it cool. okay. Okay. Filling, our filling our tahu canister with beans so, somebody, somebody, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll get right to work on that and it'll be ready by the time we post this that's Fantastic. a lie that's a lie we don't have any beans <laughs> oh dear Anyway, so in the meantime, then, uh, or in the bean time, should I say? Uh, <laughs> nice. Bean time! It's bean time! Gotta get beans on bean time! <laughs> Who has a topic that you'd like to start us off with? Uh, I do want to make one note. Uh, this yes. is my favorite memory of Greg of all time. Is mm. the day mm -hmm. he joined BSL One and then vandalized the website by putting false information because he read <laughs> the very what? next serial. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh goodness. No. Okay, what, what I happened? don't remember that. Okay, okay. Back in 2007. This is all the way back. Uh, does anybody remember? In the time the... before time. Yes. Uh, Dreams of Destruction, I believe. It's the one where... Uh, what was it? It's Lesovic versus... Uh, Karzani. Karzani. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was that memory that was put into his head where his Toa team <clears throat> survived a sentient cloud. But All then right. the very next cha All chapter, he reveals cloud. not only did they never face off against the sentient cloud, but his entire team was killed by Zyklak. <laughs> hmm. So he yeah. edited the wiki to specifically say that all of his team was killed by a sentient cloud, and then that was retconned in the very next chapter. <laughs> God that damn is it. beautiful. I, I so his only edit to BSL1 is literally vandalism. <laughs> That's pretty funny. If he did There's... that on purpose to kind of like give people a sneak preview, like he, he, they don't even know what I'm doing here until maybe. tomorrow. Finally <laughs> possible. I, I'm There's... almost wondering if maybe instead somebody up at the uh, at the story team said, "No, that's stupid. 
please change that. There's well, impossible because the sentient possible. cloud isn't exactly, uh, you know. Well, I mean, we did have prototypes. Yeah, I was yes, looking at, at yeah. some of his questions and answers recently, and uh -huh. at least when he was talking to the fans, it kind of seemed intentional, like he knew all along. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> tough yeah. to say. I yeah. mean, I mean it, it is. He, oh, go ahead. There's he has gone on record wonderful. multiple times saying that he, he doesn't like to plan a lot of the details out ahead of time. He just sort of writes yeah. as he goes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't true. say! And so one <laughs> time, apparently, like this was this went over in the uh, eight ten panels last year. But at what I think it was time trap, he actually wrote the book backwards just to challenge himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was. <laughs> I forgot about was that. Not, really? I'm pretty sure that was, was it, one of was the it not, legends I, ones, actually. Yeah, mm. yeah, it was one of the 2007 books that he I wrote. I thought backwards. it was time trap. Maybe I'm getting That's it confused bizarre. with his favorite book. I completely yeah, yeah, time trap is his my favorite. Memory. Yeah, I was if, about to say, Time Trap is definitely his favorite. If it's hmm. going to be any of the Legends books uh, from 2007, I bet you it's Downfall. Hmm. Oh, no. I, no, no I, well, maybe he, Downfall, but I think it might have also been... Um, le no, not Legacy of Evil. What would have been the other one? No, no, plot, that would have been what I would have thought it would be. Plot twist, Number it's four. the one that got like, canceled. <laughs> <laughs> it got canceled because he only he wrote the ending. <laughs> and you can start reading it right now on Missing Legacy. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a here's a question for the for the group. Is anyone does anyone here is anyone here's favorite book in the series not Time Trap? Yes. Because yes. okay. Every um, mine, quite a few, actually. mine is Voyage of Fear. I don't quite know why. I just found it. It was the only one I read in See, one he, he, here's sitting. The, here's the um, thing about so, Voyage, of Voyage of Fear. Voyage of Fear is good. Voyage mm -hmm. of Fear is good. Voyage of Fear is half of a story. I, I, when I think of Voyage of Fear, I always lump it together with Maze of Shadows because, as far as I'm concerned, mm. they're the same story, just split across two books. Yeah, pretty much. I mean ways. that's that's okay. logical. Time mm. Trap is objectively the best book, and uh, whoever said it's not is wrong. <laughs> I mean I don't I don't disagree. It's definitely up there. I think for my me, favorite my, is uh, my. Oh god. My favorite, if you like forced me to answer, would probably be Island of Doom, because oh, I'm a good Paraka too. shill. Yeah. I like. <laughs> that. I, I definitely feel really the same way, but I, I definitely feel the same way about 2006, but. My favorite is Legacy of Evil. That's Mine also too. very good. Yes. Also good I will choice. say, yeah, very, Island very of Doom good. is an excellent introduction to the, the whole all... Voyanui saga. It was Absolutely. just a good subversion, because yeah. I never, like, I was shocked as a kid. It was like, oh, I can't believe that actually just happened. <laughs> yeah, the, the, one thing, the one thing that I'll give Island of Doom is, <clears throat> unlike any of the other supplementary material that existed at the time, that book actually does <clears throat> make an effort to bridge the gap between... Mask of Light and Voya Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. True. Yeah. Well, I what's definitely, your favorite? I I struggle because I have a handful. The uh the first book of Greg's that I ever read, and the first bionicle book that I ever fully led read, yeah, was uh, <laughs> Adventures Three, The Darkness Below. And that's just kind oh, of very a very good one. That's just a, a fun yeah. story and it also uh it's kind of a prelude to, I think it is uh, Voyage of Fear, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, so. No, that one comes just well, yeah. sort of in um, the in that, that in between one before the Morbuzak fight. Not not Le a Legends direct... of Metronui was between those. It was after the yeah. Morbuzak, but right before Legends of Metronui. <laughs> yeah, no, really? not, not, no, not I thought a direct. The darkness, the, I thought the Darkness Below was the second one, and then after that, it was Trial by Fire. No, no, it's the third one. Oh, second my, one. My bad. Uh, oh. Darkness Below had Croc and not Mavra. Um, yeah. yeah. Right, no, no. You yeah, for some of reason, I'm thinking like point. Mavra showed up prior. But, um, Good old Mavra. Out, outside of that, for <laughs> personal reasons, though, I think the two that constantly flip places all the time would be Downfall and Swamp of Secrets. Ooh, and Swamp of Secrets is a weird choices. one. It, that That's the, the stranger of the two, but it's the only novel that I can think of that has a pre-tree speak Liwa and it has one of my favorite Liwa lines in the entire <laughs> series. Which um, one was it? Uh, let me see. Ah, this favorite. is the life. Wake <laughs> up in the morning, have a little breakfast, and then spend all day trying to avoid being fried. 
<laughs> yeah. nice. you know, it's funny that. you bring that up. It, it's funny you bring that up. I never noticed that. Nor did I. Leiwa didn't have tree speak in that book. Me and, I mean, it makes say the same perfect, thing. perfect, perfect My, sense. Uh, our that favorite, does beg yeah. the question, though. Why doesn't he have tree speak? Because you would think, like, if he, he adopted it on Mata Nui, he adopted it really fucking quick. It wasn't. Yeah. Pro- it, no, no, no. He adopted it. Was it was programmed into him? It just hadn't been programmed yet. Mm. That uh, no, that would mean he'd have to have been programmed with it while he was asleep. Yeah, like somebody he, broke yes! into the Codex in the middle no. of a hurricane just to no, make no, him no. talk Time stupid. No, no, no! Time to screw with him. Time to troll him. <laughs> Time to Our no, no, no. himself programmed it in and said, <laughs> "One day this will come in he, handy." He, Lewa, he just had he <laughs> just had a system update while he was asleep. It's fine. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> to be it's just, fair, like, it's just no, like the fair, Venture you could Brothers. Say he's they using sucked. it more sparingly just, early on the, because he only uses it in certain media for like the first year. I mean, mm. that that is true, but the same can also be said for Nuju. It's just, it's just like because Ven- it, yeah. the concept didn't exist at the time. It's That's just right. like Venture Brothers. They learned what they le- They were pro- they received additional <clears throat> programming while they were sleeping. <laughs> with Liwa, he. It, it even says on BS1 he didn't use tree speak until he arrived on the island, and it, and that hmm. makes the first novel, the coming of the Toa, or not the coming, the tale of the Toa. There we go. Okay, uh, never mind. A little, <laughs> in, 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 what, what's that word for something? Anachronistic. That anachronistic. There we go. Thank you. Anachronistic. Yeah. Because he does. You know use the tree only speak in that. the only reason I uh, get, this more ties into the whole. Um, idea that Greg and his books helped like establish my English skills growing up but like the only reason I know that word is because of that <laughs> one quote from Zaktan you are an anachronism Toa you're yeah. a noble hero striving for right in a, something along those lines I agree. It knowing is that classic. your day is long past yeah it's oh. an I, oh, I am Zaktan reader of the sources <laughs> The edge lord himself. <laughs> oh, Every yeah, single that's, that's one my, of that's my... my like big history with Greg is like I, I was homeschooled for most of my life after <laughs> Nerd, grade no, six ish, I... <laughs> and he pretty well taught me the entirety of my vocabulary. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do want to bring up uh, oh. biggest influence on me is that I now cannot write a sentence without splitting it in half with an M dash. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my god, same. <laughs> oh yeah. Same. <laughs> I, I do want to say a lot of people... Is that, is that correct me if I'm that? wrong, a lot of people definitely didn't start with the books when it comes to Greg's writing, correct? I'm assuming no, a lot of us started with the comics. Be, uh, yeah, if I did not with Bionicle from the start, it would have right. been the comics. I, I mean, I didn't made, read the books, the books till college. <laughs> really? Books. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I don't know how common the comics were in the UK yeah. at all. Like, I, I never saw if them you had, in, right. like, a magazine a or anything. Mag- if you, wait, you had a subscription, but they didn't come with it? I, I didn't have a subscription. I just picked up random ah. issues when I found them at a news agent's. Okay, um, yeah. if you had a subscription, they were always included with the magazine when you got it in the mail. Right, okay. Right. Which, yeah, well, no, my introduction to Greg's Rising then was the books. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it's still accurate. You'd have to look at the data somewhere. I haven't been able to find it out, but... At one point in time, just because of the way the comics were distributed, the Bionicle comics were the world's most widely distributed comic book. It is Ooh, true. Yeah, I remember this, reading that. Uh, the yeah. source for that is, um, I mean, it, ultimately it is Lego, but it's mm. in um, Brick by Brick, how Lego rewrote the rules right, and the global right. toy industry. Mm. I don't know That's... how accurate those numbers are to this day, though. Like, I don't think there was any oh, yeah. indication of when. Oh, that I'm sure. I'm was sure taken. a Batman or Avengers comic probably overtook well, at some point. Yeah, mm. I, I imagine they're probably accurate because DC handled all three of the. So, in the book, they specifically mention it was out circulating Superman and Batman, which mm. are in like the top three highest sold comic books of all time. Very true. Um, the third, funnily mm-hmm. enough, is One Piece. But, <laughs> that, yeah, that that tracks. Chip would know that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like it, I, I believe DC would probably have those numbers and be like, yeah, so we have Batman, Superman, oh, and Bionicle. That's right. so funny to me still to this day. <laughs> I I love that. 
Yeah. Um, I yeah. actually didn't get a subscription until like 2002. So for my, but I was with Bionicle from the start. I just had no story context mm. because I had no I, subscription to read the comics. The books didn't exist, and I had no internet to play Monog. So for the first oh. year, it was like cool robots. My, <laughs> that, that, that's, my that's, my, that's funny because my first comic was actually number four. I don't remember what mm. happened to one through three. If I ever got them in the uh, <laughs> magazine or not. My that, that, that's first what got comic me. No, was uh, Ignition number one. Before that, I only had M Nog in the movies. Hmm. So well, that, that, so, that, that so does make the, the question Baraka though. Um, was... what, how long, if ever, have you guys had a Lego magazine subscription? Anyways, two thousand six, two thousand two, uh, nineteen ninety eight, I believe. Two thousand four. <laughs> 2006. Wow, I mean. LJ, you're so late. Fake fan fake. Shut the fudge <laughs> up, dude. <laughs> 2001 here my first issue of the comic was number three and you, it was Jesse? very confusing to be introduced to number three and then it ends with a, like we're gonna stop makuda and then the next one's just something completely different we're gonna stop you, makuda Jesse? in the legend of matadui video game coming soon <laughs> well, yeah because i didn't have internet at home so i had no idea about monog so i was just like what we didn't see the cool part like we're just skipping that <laughs> jo yeah. Josie, what, oh, we got to see it all right what, what about you Josie before 2015 there was never a point in the life of cats in which we did not have the Lego magazine okay so you and I are probably tied then because I had a subscription since 1996 correction we were we had our brain tumor in 1995 we Lego entered our lives two years later Okay, uh, so so we, I probably had it for the longest then, possibly because yeah, I don't remember yes. if I had it before two thousand or before nineteen ninety eight or not. Hold on, let let's mm -hmm. look up what. Hold on, let's look up again what our first Lego when we oh, got wait. what. Our first no, Legos. no, you know what? I remember now. I think I remember reading them all the way back in ninety three, ninety four. So. Uh, oh, geez. Uh, I am also probably the oldest one here. So. I was about to say, yeah, in your mm -hmm. case, that, that tracks. I, I, I was not alive in ninety three. <laughs> Let's see, our first, our, the first two Lego sets we ever remember owning were 1997. Okay. Okay. Wow. So we don't know exactly how long at, until our parents bought us a subscription to Lego Magazine, but we do know that it was definitely soon, because, mm. once mm -hmm. again, we do not remember even the fate, even... We do not have even the vaguest memory of our life without Lego Magazine. Up, yeah. until, up until 2015, when we had to become responsible for our own mailing subscriptions, and so there you go. then, then, uh, then we did not. Ha then we do not have the Lego Magazine subscription. Mm. Yeah. That makes. Yeah. Sense. I mean, it really goes to show, like how formative for a lot of people this was. That you know, you've had it for most of your life. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Greg's work this whole time. I, I seem to have absolutely. misplaced the image here, but I had like a scan of a real of one of the old Lego magazines from. Uh, I have the magazine around me somewhere, but I can't get up to get dig it out. I bought it off Bricklink a while ago. I think it was January, February two thousand one, and mm. there was just this little tiny image on a page of previews of upcoming stuff that just had a picture of Onua. And Bionicle.com. And that just caught my attention immediately. Oh, yeah. Nice. And at that time, the Bionicle website was so new that the website itself didn't even exist. It just redirected directly <laughs> to MNOG. For Cat's nice. Lego, wow. was for Cat's Lego was physical therapy after our brain tumor. Mm. Makes sense. Mm. Makes mm. perfect sense. And uh, relevant to that, since we've been exploring ourselves as being fractured multiple selves in one body uh our motor skills have vastly improved so very nice oh, nice yes very good uh we've opened soda cans with our right hand nice hey. we didn't we didn't think that would <laughs> oh. ever be possible i think i, I actually yeah. found the image now oh Wonderful. nice nice Dupo. See if we, I can, yeah we bought you we bought it i found bought... a psd that i did to like uh, I tried to clean up a scan a little bit, so... I believe in you, Liam. Yeah, January 2001, that's it. Hey, hey. Oh, uh, yeah. 
And I ended up buying that uh, copy of that magazine off Bricklink not too long ago, just to have that page framed. (laughs) Very, very cool. (laughs) Monuments to history. I remember I ended up finding a copy of the magazine that had comic number one in it, completely sealed in its cellophane bag, and I only opened it the day I went to Emerald City Comic Con to have Carlos Deanda sign the comic. Nice. 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 And that was in 2016. 16 i believe man mm. i want some comic artist signatures i never I, ne- I never go to cons or anything to get signatures but it'd be cool to have mm. well just become a comic artist and then you can sign everything you want <laughs> me being an artist you're hilarious <laughs> i mean at some point uh, i haven't really discussed this publicly yet but a lot of different factors, including Stuart Sager himself, are kind of pushing me to be like, hey, you should turn 810 into an actual physical convention sometime. Oh man, Bionicon? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> Maybe sometime in the coming years if we can figure it out, uh, figure out the financial logistics of it. Um, um, this yeah. year, we're I, announcing I've it now. Actually, I'll, I'll give you a, a quick <laughs> preview. No, uh, financial yeah. logistics expensive. Yeah, not wrong. <laughs> not wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to end we're, up we're like also... uh, what was it, DashCon? No, we absolutely <laughs> do. We okay, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Not a ball pit, a mask <laughs> pit. No, okay, no, no. Uh, it's a block it. pit. You're, no, it you're would still a be a block. No, no, no. Still be you're a ball both pit. wrong. The Xamorphosphere yeah, pit. There we go. It's, <laughs> yes. it's like it's, oh it's like it's like it's like a ball pit, but the balls are tiny plastic marbles. I would absolutely love that. I would come just to be in the Xamorph pit. <laughs> oh my I, goodness! I need I, to build a Dash Con ball pit now using Xamorphs <laughs> as the ball. <laughs> I need to build that and just bring it to Put that on screen if it's ready in time. That's oh, really I'll really see what I can do. A lot of, a lot of marbles. Oh, well, I, I dare you. I dare I you. I have them. To, okay, swear. I yes. dare you to make the the Zamor pit and put all the Coley heads in it. <laughs> they only have three. And put pills. that in the presentation. <laughs> Oh okay. man, you're if asking you only, too much of if, the poor man. If, if you only, okay, <laughs> if you all know what like, I have to come, work on. We need to get <laughs> Greg to come to Bionicon and become like the keynote speaker. If you only have <laughs> no, 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 no. We we will send out a personal invitation to Christian Faber, and he'll personally ignore it. <laughs> what are you talking about? He'll be like, oh, you know what? Thank you so much for your invitation. However, uh, I can't be there right now. I will. Provide you I will with send a Christian this favor, in my place. Ex- an exclusive Bionicle <laughs> Day NFT. We need the favor <laughs> NFT. Oh my god. Tarago oh. Tyne NFT. Let's go. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I-, I got the perfect meme for this. Hold on. There. Oh, there shit. it is. Enjoy. <laughs> if, if you only have three built, simply invent time travel. Go back in time, oh, no. steal them, go back in time again, steal them, no. and just keep repeating until uh, either you have enough to fill a ball pit or the universe explodes. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. I think the universe oh. would probably explode first. No, no, if I go backwards yeah. in time, I'm just saving Bionicle. <laughs> from itself. Gee, what what no, if, if you're no. going back in time, you're getting trapped in 2001, and that's how you become Greg. Oh, of course. <laughs> what are you talking about? Greg's already here, Greg. Oh, we're gonna oh. fix. So, oh, we're gonna fix so many things <laughs> if we go back in time. We're gonna tell everyone. Hey, hey, everyone, stop it. Get some stop help. It. Get some help. Get some help. <laughs> exactly. You know That's a good idea. Yeah. So we're gonna, if I go point... back in time, I would kill Ninjago halfway through so my uncle G2 oh, could get its TV show. <laughs> <laughs> it needed its TV show. It needed it. <laughs> So at some point we should parts probably start diving more into Greg's work because we're already well, at half no, hour. We can, we can just ramble endlessly. <laughs> cats, you cats. Know that's a fantastic idea. We wouldn't cats. be gathered friends if we didn't get massively off topic at a rate oh. that 
just yeah. is beyond comprehension. One, one final <laughs> note. Um, I didn't get a chance to say my favorite book, uh, Dark Destiny. I will not be taking any questions. Nice. Good good okay. choice. Listen, <laughs> that listen. was another good one. I was I was so interested yes. reading that book because like, I cannot wait. Karzani seems like such an interesting character. I can't wait to see him be like the main <laughs> part of the story going forward. Listen, the ending of that book where, where the... Toa and Aika emerge from their canisters and like make their their spirit stars and stuff. That shit gave yep. me chills when I first read it. That was like, yeah, that's some of Greg's like best atmospheric yeah. writing. Yes, oh, yeah. for the longest the hell, time. Okay, okay. I, I, not to like get off on another tangent. How the hell do spirit stars work out on Sol? On, we uh, don't Aquamagna? know. Don't question it. <laughs> so, I think he said in a forum answer that they're like projections uh, from the from the red GS- star. Y- yeah. What? Uh, really? <laughs> okay, I know this is a podcast dedicated to Craig, but can I just say he's made some very questionable ch- decisions <laughs> it, ever since, like the ending of G one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In Star well, Trek, you, you want to get Star- into that? We can get into that if you want. But I, th- I oh, think dear. we should acknowledge, since this is a Greg appreciation podcast, that <laughs> all those choices were made in the interest of keeping fans engaged with the story and yeah. you know yeah. all his Absolutely. all his little forum ventures we will acknowledge that uh, Greg did a wonderful as... job keeping everybody engaged yes but I'm I don't pretty sure he would go back in time and be like you know have if he could do things differently like I'm sure he wouldn't want to do like the Valika right. reveal the way he did you know <laughs> yeah. he would have wanted to write about it as well like with the, the further along in time you go with this the guy is trying to remember story details that he wrote like twelve years ago, <laughs> and that he, and that he had improvised. Yeah, mm, mm. that's what I feel the worst about. I, I hear you. Cloud, are you insane? I I yeah. hear what you're saying. That he's trying his best. He's just trying to make you know fans happy and engaged. But I don't like it, so it isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And Certified Earth Tribe moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I have to ask I don't you, mind Earth Tribe. Hey, I'm joking. I have to ask you: Do you remember which side of the fence he was for Lee's name? Yeah, Lee. Oh, no. uh, I'm okay. glad. Okay, I'm very glad because I noticed this because I pay attention. Um, <laughs> you, you guys, finally added Lee as a pronunciation option on his uh, bs one page and then cited Greg saying, I have always pronounced it Liwa, but I would probably consider the movie pronunciation official, which, by the way, is also Liwa. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still on Team Lua. I will always if... be on Team Lua. Okay, you you I can't... Shut your uh, I'm on mouth. Team Lewa. Is if, it Lua or Lu? Okay, <laughs> you're killing if, me. If, I, I'm very glad if, that I, I got to retweet something that um, Alistair Swinnerton replied to BS1 on Twitter about. I remember that. And uh, I feel like it's fairly definitive. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, when Alistair. we made that poll... For what he's replying to, it was always a meme because there is no actual pronunciation on any of the choices. I know, I know. <laughs> that was had it as such. strictly a meme. And <laughs> wait, wait, I don't about... remember this poll. Did you literally just like write Lewa three times? Yes, 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 yes. you did. Yes, I did. Yes. You cheeky bastard. <laughs> it was a pretty funny poll. The original like one was one. supposed to just say Lewa and then yes and who knows. <laughs> Those were the original choices. If cats... I have Im- I have an important alternative to share. Go on. If cats are ever oh man, all, the all great it... Radini that takes me back. <laughs> if cat if cats remember correctly, all he did was <sighs> agree with everything we said. So uh, object. So really, that means that everything that everybody here believes is accurate. All as all a side, we are as all a side note, own... we're all we're all right I, about everything. I, I... As a side note, this is the first I'm ever seeing of that render of Kenny Nui. Huh. Mm, awesome. I feel like that, we, is, uh, that is... This, this image is absolutely hilarious. It's just off the <laughs> chain. Because you have Kopaka <laughs> at the top of the Kenny Nui, and because of, like, 
Bikini knew he's behind them. It just means Kopaka is massive because he's in scale with the <laughs> others. <laughs> you have Onua. Onua is just floating in midair. O- Onua is just flying. And I guess oh, yeah, so Onua some... has a mask of levitation now. I love See, some that. Poor, some it's poor, a... no, some no, poor no, intern was handed a folder of Bionicle stock art and just also, told make a picture. Is anybody going to sit there? Picture. Is anybody to sit down and actually try to pronounce what Radini is saying? Pohatu Onua. Gali, mm-hmm. Tahu, yeah. Lewa, and Kopak. Everything else is pretty okay, but it, yeah. it's not Lewa, it's Lewa. Lewa. Yeah, the emphasis on the second syllable Lewa. of Lewa is wild. Lewa. <laughs> Lewa. <laughs> is it just Lewa. me or is that Pohato? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my exactly. god. <laughs> I do love you know, I know he's got them. kicks, po- but. Pohato! <laughs> Man. Uh, can yeah, Casey White Cell guys. not 12 anymore from California if you're watching this? Uh, hello there. How can we get them on you? for an interview? Please, <laughs> get in touch. You know, they, you know they, found the, they found the win kid recently? Yeah, I saw that! Oh my that. god, oh my yes. god yes. Yes. really? <laughs> okay, M- Meso, I... I... I really needed. I really <laughs> needed to play that up a lot more publicly because every time I would like build a new set and Mess and I were hanging out, like I would always go to the back of the instructions, and be like, "Win!" <laughs> you have to. You have to get in the spirit of it. <clears throat> Channel your inner win. <laughs> I remember him distinctly from the Hero Factory sets, which feels a little heretical right now. This word I know Did, what uh, you're going to post. I want to celebrate Greg's greatest work. <laughs> I'm not posting Hero anything. Hero Factory Book 1, The Doom Box. Did <laughs> anyone here ever win? No. I did no. not. Uh, okay, no. that's a lie, actually. That's a lie. I won second prize in one of the Galador challenges. Real? Oh, oh, really? Nice. Yeah. I still have the demo CD that they sent me. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Nice, nice. The, the only thing Defenders I have ever disc, won is a copy of it. Breath of the Wild when I already bought Breath of the Wild. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't I think that. I've ever won anything. Uh, I won I a copy never... of Ratchet and Clank All for One when I was supposed <laughs> to win a copy of Star Wars The Old Republic. Rip. That's depressing. Cats. Also, yeah, that, that's what I got from the challenge. Oh, you know what? No, I oh, have nice. actually won something. I actually... No, no, no. I won one of BZ Power's contests, and they never sent me the prize. What no, it was the prize? Oh. oh, it was um, one of the Star Wars CCBS. Can I remember? You're, you're, you're really yeah. missing out. I'll, yeah. I'll, send you, I'll send you my <laughs> copy of whichever one it was, because I have them and don't particularly care for them. You don't particularly <laughs> care for Jin Erso and uh, no, I <laughs> never I bought one of the ones with faces. Those were horrible. Oh, oh, I only got the like the stormtroopers uh, and robots and Whatever the name of that, the K2SO all was black. He's the honorary best. K two S O, General Grievous, Boba Fett, and the last Darth Vader. Those are like the four. Oh, and the speeder bike. Oh, I had the speed. I actually bought the speeder bike half off. At the Lego Lucky. store in Connecticut, in the headquarters. What was it just like on clearance? No, they gave us all the st- the store discount. Oh, yeah, the, the employee discount. The store because that was part of the fifty uh, percent off. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> I really need to take a picture of myself doing the win kid face I and wonder, put my name over it. I wonder if yeah. Greg would have bought a speeder bike for fifty percent off. <laughs> we need to get a picture of. We need to get a picture of Greg doing the win kid face. <laughs> You know what? He's got his face. You have to take his face. I have a I have a transparent render of his face. I don't know where it is, but I will get to it. All right. Greg, I'm not it's at my desktop. I'm on a It's time for the Bionicle fans to make you do something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what um, beautiful, beautiful. What do we want to discuss next from his history? Okay. Uh, well, um, what I want to know is, has anybody here read Greg's <clears throat> non-Bionicle works? I've read I have... New Story Any Interest, uh, not recently. Yes. I don't remember much of it. I just um, read that this morning, so that one's fresh in my head, but yeah. I haven't really read anything the, else the yet. The New I'll, Story I'll honest, I, I definitely chance... have, but no, nothing else. I have not had a chance okay. to down mm-hmm. read anything whatsoever other than Bionicle stuff from him. I've read everything Greg has written, I think, besides the short stories he wrote before Bionicle and Demon's Dream. Impressive. Mm. Nice. Very nice. Uh, I will say, uh, uh, as far as the new story is concerned, I like the tone he's going for. It's it's similar in a lot of ways to Bionicle in that you have like a clear set of 
super-powered heroic cast members, but it takes on more of a, like... It, it takes on more of a darker tone. Like, there's something mm. about these characters that made the entire team sort of break up. And yeah. now, years and years down the line, they're getting back together because <clears throat> something terrible is happening that requires them to do so. It's, I'm always it's basically, a sucker for okay, stories it's basically, like that. I, I can't believe it took me this long to figure it out. It's Eternals. It's the plot to Eternals. Oh, no. And I mean, <laughs> Eternals, and Eternals was Bionicle this whole yeah, time. Eternals, Eternals is basically cool. just Bionicle, so. Cat, it all, maybe yeah. I should actually see that movie. I mean, you I liked it. Liked it. I didn't hate it. You're wrong in every way. I, I enjoyed it. I liked Eternals. Cats ain't know it. how to read. It was Cats ain't know how to read, you mooks. Fuck. <laughs> Something I, I do, something I do want to mention about some of Greg's pre-Bionicle books yes. is he, what he largely did beforehand, as people may already know, is books set in the world of tabletop RPGs made by the company he worked for. Hmm. Um, so, like, Hell's Feast is in the world of Blood Shadows, and, like, if you flip to the back of the book, you can see, like, the stats of all the characters. By the way, um, just real quick on that note... Absolutely yeah. love the completely unabashed reference to the um, Castlevania logo for Blood Shadows. Epic. <laughs> it is definitely reminiscent. But I think that Greg really carried that forward into his Bionicle writing in a way that worked really well. Like, hmm. in terms of... You can feel in some of his previous books where he, he wants to set up a world and tell a little story within it but he's mainly setting up pieces and world elements and things for you to do things with when you are actually, like, getting into this world through the game itself, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think yeah. his Bionicle books definitely have something of a, like a, I don't know, they're, they're like reading a and a d, d campaign, sort of. For sure. Um, it, it, mm. it feels like Bi Bionicle books were his... It was his way of taking that kind of story writing and expanding on it without the same limitations that he had with the previously established world building that he would have been writing in. Mm -hmm. Which does make mm -hmm. sense when you think about it, like, contextually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think in part a lot of that is also why Bionicle works so well as a tabletop RPG. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I think it's really conducive to a... <laughs> A story for a property that, that revolves around the idea of kids making their own characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, definitely. Yeah. That's really interesting. Now, I know that his earlier work, that that um, Blood Shadows, wasn't that supposed to be a trilogy? And that, uh, like Bionicle and like Hero Factory, he wasn't able to finish that series or something? Um... For Blood Shadows, I believe there are at least three books, but they aren't all written by him. Because Demon's Dream and Hell's Feast are both in the world of Blood Shadows, but there's like a second book in between them that's just okay. written by a different guy. Yeah, at, Same thing okay. with, with River of God, where it's in Shatter Zone and there's a sequel that's written by someone else. At the end of the Zip. book, you sent me the link to, um, which <clears throat> I didn't have a chance to fully read, but there at the end, I um, there was... A list of the rest of the books in the series but they were all written by other authors hmm. since you mentioned okay. that he did a lot of like tabletop rpg books and books based off of that it did remind me i was actually going through like his amazon listings uh, at, uh earlier today just out of curiosity apparently he did an indiana jones book really oh, really, really? Yeah. yeah i that's yeah. i have not heard about I, that he also did Star Wars. I remember finding his Wikipedia entry. Interesting. That's one thing that him and Ryder Windham have in common, then. How long what ago was the Indiana Jones book, do you know? Um, oh my god, it's $177. Sure. What if, yeah, it's not what if, <laughs> Good lord. What if, what if Greg becomes the Kevin Feige of the Indiana Jones movies that are being... <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, I found a cheaper copy... Only ninety five dollars. Yes, oh, man. In Indiana Jones and the Sky Pirates. I'm about to Sky Pirate this book myself at that price. <laughs> you know, if they had a copy of that book right now, they could actually afford one half of a GPU right now. He Cats did a Tales just... from the Crypt book. 
Cats are just in what? love yes. with this fiction in our yes, head. Yes, I have that read that. Huh. Cats are it was just a, in love it was with a this comic. fiction in our head that Greg becomes the Kevin Feige of the Indiana Jones movies next year and goes back to working with Lego <laughs> as a, as a license as, as, because he's he's doing movies again. <laughs> what? <laughs> so he's yeah. in the city. We're not going to talk hmm. about that. Oh, uh, sorry, what was that? Don't worry about it. As cats, as cats tried to, as cats uh, bluntly put by screaming that cats don't know how to read, you mooks. Uh, we have regretfully not read anything else that Greg has ever written, and we're likely Fair. not around to start now. We got one of our favorite Christmas presents we received in the last few years was a book, and we haven't read it yet. If, if so, that should probably exemplify. How we just aren't it. reading is hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, do, especially doing, these days, just finding time for it. Just yeah. doing things. Cat, we we keep wanting to do things with ourselves, but you know how it is. We're. Yeah. It's not that we're lazy. It's that we just can't bring ourselves to do anything or accomplish <laughs> anything. And... Yeah, like, th these days, especially, like, in my case, with Bionicle Day prep going for, like, six months out of the year in a lot of cases, I'm barely mm -hmm. even playing video games anymore. Because <laughs> so I just don't have excuse time, me, but... and when I do, I don't like doing anything that's more complicated than, like, Kirby. Yeah, Sorry, so I just they... noticed in that link you just posted, uh, Gregory Todd Fashti? Is that actually his full name? Yes, it yeah. is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Huh. Hmm. Never knew that. <clears throat> so, well, is this... Well, uh, I guess I have to do my obligatory Todd Howard gif. <laughs> of course. <laughs> there you Todd! Go. Help! <laughs> Todd! <laughs> so, so, hold on. Does that mean every time Greg kind of hand waves something away, he's literally just doing it just, it just works? <laughs> yes. It just is. The Toa Terrain Crawler is actually a Toa... And the terrain crawler is a hat it's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm down for okay, this. Okay, I, I, need, I need now to see a drawing of, like, I don't know, Firo and Skirmix just, like, walking up a sheer cliff face. <laughs> yeah. His, <laughs> like, Skyrim nice. cliff horse. That would be... Oh, not epic. cliff horse, no. Don't use that term. Fuck that. <laughs> 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 nice. I'm so oh, glad we decided we're no longer caring about swearing on this series this year. <laughs> we cared. We, we there was a point where we did care. First <laughs> fucking I did. Fucking uh, who? Well, fucking who gives a shit? Day we didn't. I, I fucking who gives it? But like, just the event in general. The, the irony, the absolute irony that like the first Bionicle Day, the smallest one that had like five or six events in total, Four. using reskinned Beaver House assets, <laughs> was the one where you were like, "No, we have to make sure that Lego doesn't sue us or something." <laughs> and then the one like two years later. We have, like, people from Lego dropping F-bombs on the show. Lawsuit watch. <laughs> oh, K20. You know, Lego. can we stop to appreciate that Greg never dropped an F-bomb on a live stream that involved LJ? <laughs> there you go. You gotta watch your language around LJ. Language. <laughs> My it's language. Cap. Are we just gonna, not, is, are we just gonna not, not acknowledge the cat said language? <laughs> language. Oh, jeez. I know this is a mild tangent, but I cannot believe that the first F bomb on TTV came from Christian Faber. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forget that happened sometimes. Oh my gosh, I kind of forget. I I forget that we we talked to him. Dude, that interview was bizarre because <laughs> that I was lying. <laughs> I'd been criticizing the man for months. I finally talked to him, and I'm like, you know what? I, I might not agree with how this was handled, but I kind of get where his head's at, and I respect his artistic integrity. And then he starts yeah. pushing NFTs on the very same show. <laughs> and everyone else <laughs> so turns on him. And, see, and I'm like, what? No, <laughs> you were doing so well. <laughs> see, I'm glad no, I, you I had wanna... that take, Meso, because I, I was there, and I thought, you know, I've been criticizing this entire thing for, I think at that point, years. And not buying into it, and then he's on the show, and I'm like, 
Okay, yeah, I was right. Well, <laughs> I, you know what I mean. I just mean getting to know him better. I was like, you know, maybe maybe I had the wrong idea. Maybe he, he was uh, being more eloquent about things. And then not only did he do the F-bomb, but then NFTs. Two yeah, F-bombs. That's so, the F stands so for. Sometimes let's you just, just um, sometimes you just want to see the world burn. Let's all, all Greg never supports NFTs. Let's all get a thank you, Greg, for never doing NFTs in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> thank yes. you, Greg. <laughs> Go thank on, you. We're, we're watching the chat thank right you, now. Greg. Seriously. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Greg. I love you. Mwah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I'm sorry for the mild tangent, but you know what? No, I, no, that's I, fine. Well. It's a funny tangent to think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> NFTs are bad. Uh, you know what? I do want to bring up um, Greg's cereals. I think that's yes. another one to go to. I'm, I'm like more of a fan of Gregory. 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 and James will have some Gregius. interesting things to say about those. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Yeah, you <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> Lucky Charms or Frosted Flakes, you know. Gregos. They're the. They're the Greg. They're the Greg. I thought. I agree. <laughs> I very much enjoyed many of the serials, trying to sort out the continuity between them for Wall of History. Um, ir irreparably melted my brain. I'm sure Tell me uh, Taraganuva can attest to the same. Oh, yeah. I can imagine, it's yeah. Rough. They're fun in their own continuity, but when you try mixing them with the books and all that timeline, that's when it... Cause it doesn't really has, like, work. I think no, they're really doesn't. interesting for the same reason that like Time Trap and The Darkness Below were because Greg wasn't really constricted by the uh, story team. He was able to mm. just tell the story he wanted to tell. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, they they were a little a little difficult to parse between each other I at mean, times. I, I there, think... There's two distinct ethoses for Bionicle, and it's like the small, centralized, you know, island-based stories, which people love from the early days, and then the 10 million characters, 20 islands, socio-political conflicts, and Multiple wars, timelines. Multiple timelines, alternate universes from the later days. Uh, I, I think like the later days. Oh, okay. Charm. Wait, I, I think one of the biggest ass-pulls, like, no offense from this statement, but like one of the biggest ass pulls in the entire story was Greg had his own Palpatine returned moment, and that was with two yet. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. yeah. So, you know what? This is Greg a was... test. This is one hundred percent something we can agree on, and this is my greatest problem. Greg yeah, was like... Rise of Skywalker the whole time. <laughs> Two yet is I, like a, a mutual cross section of, of problems. Yeah, I, I so <laughs> I personally do like the serials. I think they worked. I don't want to say fine, but they worked. I do think <laughs> they, that worked. They, they worked. They they, they <laughs> functioned. Were. They do fit in with everything. I think a lot of the struggle is the finagling to get all of the the different moving parts to align properly in timelines and, and in continuity. But yeah. it does work. It's. Mm -hmm. It could have been a lot better. It could have been cleaner, but it functions. Two yet coming back is nope. absolutely bar <laughs> nothing. My least favorite thing from Generation One. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So it's like, Hand oh, it. she's not Hand really it. dead. That's just a version from another universe it was just with a, a copy, fake Nui Stone. And she worked with the jailer to like stage <laughs> an escape. And they yeah. embedded still... crystals in her armor. I yes. still do not fully understand the exact like timeline of events there to this day. Wasn't it like thousands of years? Yes. <laughs> it was a real so, big two yet. This is why I'm very I'm glad that I, I wasn't uh, involved in the two yet contest, the fanon contest. I would have just been bitter that she exists in the modern <laughs> age. <laughs> but no, what had happened was she was arrested because she's a murderer. She was taken to an alternate dimension without <laughs> Toa what? and kept under guard by the Order of Matanui, spent 1,500 years in prison. They got all of the pieces out of her armor. She turned the guard, broke out, got the stone, and got out of there and spent they the next, They reassembled like... the stone, did they? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. They fixed it. <laughs> and so did. then she spends the, the next... This gorilla two... glued it back together. It's fine. <laughs> They spend the next 2,000 years, or uh, Tuyet does, 
traveling back and eventually makes it back just in time for Teradax to be in charge and for her to go to a random hut in the woods and do nothing on Boda Magna. That's so weird. How did she even make it back? Didn't because she, she also... didn't have an Olmec or anything, did she? No. That no, was like the Empire have... 2 yet that had an Olmec. How did she make it back? She must have. There isn't another way Also, to there are must... three separate two yets. She must have yeah, talked to the spectral yeah. Kanohi. Didn't she replace well, two and a half. herself two in and prison and with another oh, alternate version of herself from like a fourth <laughs> no. universe? No, yes, it was the she... decoy two yet. No, no, no. What no, the she... fuck is this? The finale of Yu-Gi-Oh! What the hell? The, the thing that happened is there was an explosion and the guard was like, oh, gee, she's dead. Uh, One Bakora, okay. two Bakora, three Bakora, no, Here's what, here's what Biasa once says, and I love whoever wrote this. It's so funny. Tuyet escaped her confinement and utilized the Dimensions technology to travel out of <laughs> <laughs> the, what? The, the what? The what? Utilize the dimensions technology. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's I, there's no Toa in that dimension, but everyone like a has a personal teleportation device. I just, just, to she just walked through a Lego dimensions portal. Exactly. <laughs> I this choose is to why, believe that Greg Farsty why... pulled a homestuck here, inserted himself into the story as a character, <laughs> physically picked Tuyet up, and put her in the other universe. And that's I love it. it. Good enough. I love that. This, is why, bi- this okay. is why Bionicle is the best shit ever. This is why Bionicle is the best shit ever, because none of this I, makes if, sense. If, none of this if makes Greg sense. is physically picking up Tuyet and, like, bringing her to another universe, it's gotta play out, like, this one stupid gift that I have. I just need to... Th- I, I never have these things prepared. Here it is. Here it is. It, it's just this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so, Love it. Yeah, amidst, yeah. amidst the whole storied history of Bionicle, that's our that's, that's everyone's unanimous point. Yeah. Yeah, it's just no. it's just too yeah, but everything else I'm I find myself also, liking basically everything else. Like for me, Greg's writing through Bionicle, of course, is what inspired me to just straight up enjoy reading. Like, mm. it is w- yeah. through him that I had a vested interest in reading and learning a better vocabulary in practicing how I write and mm. doing better with that. Yeah. It just... No, he, uh, I mentioned before as well, like, you know, yeah, how he helped with my English, but I didn't really, like, fully... Like, uh, when I'm speaking, I fall over my words all the damn time, but when I'm writing... <laughs> Apparently, I can write at a postgraduate level with no formal education at all, according to my last test. So that's all it's Greg. All thanks to the anachronism. <laughs> we, do, we do love, we do love Greg. You can, but we do love Greg. He's a great writer. You can go back through any through any writer of any medium and analyze their entire works, and you'll find lots of times when they were just like. Uh, I gotta move this story along or I don't get paid. I yeah. I got writer's block. I, I I haven't had I ran out of coffee today. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> uh, time travel. <laughs> yeah, I, I always <laughs> find yeah. those things fascinating to like explore and analyze as well. Because like nobody's perfect, right? And Regarding the serials, problem. though, I I do think the serials worked best when they were telling their own self-contained stories. Absolutely. Like, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, Brothers in Arms was a really good one in that yes. regard. Up and up because until it didn't it wasn't. rely on much else around it. <laughs> well, up, what, up you, until they you don't, randomly. <laughs> you don't like Melding Universe Teradax. I like Melding Universe Teradax. I don't like that it happened in Brothers in Arms because I've been reading this great like isolated revenge story, and then all of a sudden they randomly get sent to a different universe, and Voltraz just gets left there. Yeah. Well. Voltraz was for a great now, uh, so <laughs> such oh, is no. fate. Zero. Until he yeah. finds Voltraz the escaped. third Olmec that's just floating around in the space between space after he steals the dimensional technologies. Yes, also, Voltraz escapes from the melding universe thanks to their dimensional technology. <laughs> while we are on the subject of alternate universes, I would like to propose a concept to to the group and to the audience. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's it's Liwa in the main universe. 
It's oh, Lua no. in the Dark Mirror oh, universe. Oh my god. And it's Lewa in the Kingdom universe. No, no, no. Oh, also, wait, also wait, I want to no, no, no. touch real quick on Swart's stupid joke when we were talking about two yet. When I mentioned that there were like three separate two yets, and he said there were two and a half. And now I just want to see a poster nice. for two and a half men, but with two yet. Two and a half perfect. I, I'm 100% two and down half yet. For, uh, for the different Leewas, just because you said Leewas main universe, so I'm jiving. <laughs> nice. There, there we go. There are three versions of every single one of these of these alternate universes. Each one have a different pronunciation for all of the characters. So there's there three, so, so there's we got three Tehu, kingdom, we got Taiyu, and, and Tahu. Yeah. There's three so, Kingdom well, Universe, on, there's Onua, three Melvin Onua. Universes, there's there's three everything. Anya. Histories or alternate pronunciations. These are the XY planes of the multiverse. Yes. <laughs> I love this. And if you can think of more I, I than do... three pronunciations, then there's more than three universes. Obviously. <laughs> I do have to ask a question simple, yeah. to the group. Uh, of all the universes that Greg created, the pocket dimensions and stuff, what was your favorite one that he finally created? Hmm. Honestly, I mean, a, I part like of me, the... a part of me is tempted to say the City of Silver just because it's left with a lot of mystery to it. Yeah. That is yes. very tempting. I love City it's, of Silver. Uh, yes, a lot of mystery, striking visual, just yeah. sort of an interesting moral. And it's and really, atmospheric. it's really weird to say that considering it was made for literal babies. Yeah, well, <laughs> well you know. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. it's not necessarily like the intricate stuff that makes it. Pokemon impression. Bionicle while they're creative. young. That's all we got to say there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Do it. I kind of liked uh, the Empire. Babies. Empire would be the safe answer, but I'm a sucker for some edge. What can yeah. I say? Yeah, yeah, babies. Uh, I, I do I mean, love personally... that the Empire universe, all we see of it, really, is just like everybody dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I'm surprised they didn't set a nuke off in the middle of the city just to emphasize they, the point. Can the Empire I'm, Universe be the Hero Factory Universe? Rocks fall, <laughs> everybody I'm dies. I'm curious of the logistics of the Empire Universe because supposedly nothing that happened there was disruptive enough to the universal order that it hurt Mata Nui's health in any way, but a Matoran <laughs> civil war in a single city was enough to put him on death's door. Yeah. In yeah, all fairness, I'm just saying. Uh, in yeah. all fairness, that city was his brain and it was like 600 years long. That is true. True. Yeah. All I'm saying yeah. is, in a universe where all the heroes die... They need to make some more, and what better way to make some more than in a factory? All right, you're done. I'm gonna be the one to forge, say it. if you will. I think I think I preferred the kingdom. I, it yeah. sounds dark, but I think I preferred the kingdom because there were some I interesting like stories to to come from that. I, I like the kingdom mainly for its um, it, its very um, Lovecraftian representation of Makuta's form. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's something like, that's been missing from Bionicle since 2001, and it was nice I to get agree. a glimpse of that uh, again. Excuse yeah. me, have you forgotten about Trencrom? Yeah, but... No, no. I do tend to forget about really Trencrom. Have... <laughs> I like to think about the implied future space travel in the Kingdom, too. Like, maybe they made it to Baramagna and the Great Beings or whoever are just like, what, what'd, you, what'd you do with the rope? You had a robot. Where did it? What? <laughs> that, is a, that is a cool idea. What how, did you do with our you fucking how robot? Are you talking we spent to our us? entire budget on that. <laughs> you weren't even supposed to have sentience. Do you know how many great beings didn't get health care because we were building that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. You should have just asked it for the prototype. We're literally living in it right now. Okay. Here's a question. That, that went over your head. Mm. What, uh, what are you guys' favorite cereal? Which one? Mm. Is anyone not going to say Federation of Fear? Frosted no, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no one is. <laughs> yeah, Frosted no. Mice. What are we? Some kind of Federation yeah. of Fear? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's actually, a tough one. that's a hard one. I need to look back at the catalog. Let's Mine is easily Federation of Fear, but if I had to choose a not so obvious one, Reign of Shadows. Oh, Fe Federa Reign of Shadows. Federation of Fear. Federation... I wish it had mattered more, but. Yeah. Feder Federation of Fear is the one where V's on joined the Suicide Squad, right? 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, that one. And then, obviously. for some <laughs> reason, had a combiner ready to go, and then they said, forget that, we set up a whole contest, let's bring in a new character. And then Wait, we were they talking, had a was combiner just, like, set for Miserix? No, they didn't. Um, no, 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 no. Miserix was the contest, and Spiria was the combiner. Oh, right, right, right. I forget Spira exists because he's stupid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and he has a weird horrible. vestigial being right. on him. I gotta get through all the Duma he's, postings. He's to see if just I can find got an new. unborn twin. <laughs> what were you saying, Alge? Probably for me, it's just Dark Mirror, which I know is kind of a boring answer, but it, it was so you. out there. I, I yeah. enjoy it. It's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I, I have, enjoy I have it! A <laughs> I'd have to pick Empire of the Scroll. The... Um, really? Yeah. Cause I do like there's... Empire of the Scroll, yeah. I like Empire of the Scroll is good. The 2009 I mean, I get it. Anything, added it a lot anything of that dimension. fleshed out 2009. It was really uh, interesting yeah, to see yeah. one that like focused more on making us understand why the villains were the way they were. Because I think one of Greg's weaker spots when it came to his writing was that he said in his forum answers that he thinks villains are more fun when they're just evil for evil's sake, and it was mm -hmm. interesting yeah. to see the scroll and get some development and see why they are the it way they are. It made Tuma pretty, I wouldn't say relatable, but pretty, like, understandable. Yeah. There, there is a yeah. huge yeah. reason, like, that. I, I, that's one of the points that Greg's made in the past that I very much disagree with, is that yeah, villains agree. can't be redeemed. Because yeah. I think it was a huge waste to set up um... Uh, what's his fucking name? Krika, the way he did, mm, yeah. and yeah. just kill him off with the rest. I like well, that Krika. I mean, I kind of like that Krika died. It was sort of, it was sort of chilling to see him get that kind of development and then just die such a horrible death. Um, it really mm. added some like weight to what every you know everything that was going on with the plan TM. I suppose well, that's it's fair. It's an interesting school of thought with villains because I, I don't want to put words into Greg's mouth. I don't know the context for why you said that, but I know for me at times it's a line you walk because redeemed villains are kind of very common in media. You know, it's kind of an archetypal uh, role they can go through to the point where having a villain that isn't redeemed and just fully commits wholesale. Smart, please. That's is kind of a rarity. Right. Hey, 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 I'm gonna, and, and we're gonna yet we can still we're, hear it. We're going to mute our microphone. All right. Uh, we don't so, know how to do that. All right. I, I really thought Hello? that was you because you always have the phone. I know. Sorry. I know. Hello? I went to my room. I <laughs> muted my phone, and the other Hello? phones are nowhere near me. Uh, so for Greg, it may have been a thing where he was like, "Oh, if we actually just like commit to villains, it might be more fresh." But mm. I don't know. I, also, I don't I, agree. I'm, I do I'm with have you. to ask. I do have to ask. Has the vestigial unborn Bop. Siamese twin on Spiria ever been explained in any way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's it's, no. it's non-canon apparently. <laughs> yeah. We hate we, we hate just, Spiria. Uh, we it, hate Spiria. It anyway, doesn't that... exist. It's not a thing. It it's just <laughs> oh, a God. part of the build that <laughs> but I it was should <laughs> exist. Anyway, it's, that like, was... it's like it's just like in uh, the Legend Reborn when they still had what's his name piloting the Scopio, even though yeah. it's yeah. an actual Tellurus, Scopio, yeah. not the vehicle. Tellurus brain, Tellurus brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Hello, I Josie. I love stuff like that with Bionicle. Yeah, By that the was way, just, we, we yeah, have that two was posters for Federation of Fear now posted. Nice. Beautiful. One of them Very actually looks like a decent job, and the other I threw together in like 20 minutes. I, I, I love the. I specifically love the character of No Image. <laughs> no Image is pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Lariska. And the fact that I just left uh, Captain Boomerang unedited, it's funnier. <laughs> I, I just noticed yeah. in the second one is Lariska using G2 Lewa's mask? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's Bionicle Chicken. Um, that was. Yeah. 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 Nice. I will say, I also love that I threw Elec, just uh, three random versions of Elec with different skin palettes, just to <laughs> represent all that species. And also, there the Enchantress go. is just a Zyglac. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> what if, I could buy it. What if every single character that doesn't have a canon image yet just has massive titties? I could see. <laughs> just every single uh, one. I, hey, if Why it not? works for Rudaka. Every single <laughs> one. <laughs> Every single one. Every single one. That's yeah. that's why it, that's why oh. it's so important. That's why it's so That's important why we don't have images because it's it's not safe for Lego. 
Yeah, that's why it's not <laughs> canon. That's why it's Should so we bring important that up? So, canon so out what you're saying about is, that. So what you're saying is Tren Krom has massive booba. Uh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is why oh, no. so this is why I, I it's so important. Up... This is why the canonization the canonization contests are so important because without them <laughs> Bionicle is just filled with titties. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's worth You've done go some ahead. service. Uh can we bring up just the one like one thing that Greg did that annoys us? Just get it out I of mean, the way. Two yet? Mm. Besides two, two, besides two yet. Toa well, I think I already else. made. My, I think I already made my point about Krika. Wait, no, I did have one other point. I kind of already joked about this, but like seriously, uh, Karzani. I feel like mm, yeah. he was pretty wasted as a character. Mm, I think mo- much definitely. more could have been done with him. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I rage every time I remember Toa Kordak. I just <laughs> hate that. Yeah. Yeah. We love yeah. Toa Kordak, though. Sorry, what was the matter with Toa Kordak? It's just... Yeah. I. It's not a word that a Toa team would name themselves based Toa on what it said gun. Mean, right? They, yeah. uh, Toa, Toa Zamor. It was <laughs> Toa Desolation, it was, right? It was that... Yeah. It, no, the, the Toa theory Squid that Watcher. someone the, proposed... We're the pacifist one. The theory that someone proposed to Gre- Greg was that Kordak came to mean desolation because the Toa Kordak got 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 so hard um <laughs> and I I don't know I just never vibed with so, that theory and I didn't you know I, what I would have I, I, I just love 100. the fact that I forgot that that was a thing and now I'm just realizing that it's literally called the desolation blaster yeah so, and then and then That's Lisa hardcore. Vick installs one on his on his uh on his sea sled Sled. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. What's up? What's yeah. up, Elder? I actually 100% buy it because we see that happen. It's a natural thing that happens in language. And uh, True. there's, off the top of my head, there's an example Nimrod. That's yeah, true. 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 I'm not that's familiar true. with the history of that word. So my understanding is that Nimrod is like a biblical figure who was known for being like uh-huh. courageous and brave or something. A hunter. Um, however, huh. a hunter. Sorry, thank you. A hunter. And then he however, fucked up. And then he fucked up real bad. Now he's and now his mm, name means stupid. Nope. <laughs> however, in the Bugs Bunny cartoons, oh, no. Bugs Bunny calls Elmer Fudd a Nimrod and a maroon. That was the other one. And Nimrod, from that point on, was associated... He was trying to be sarcastic, because it's Elmer Fudd. He's a hunter. But Mm. it was interpreted, and we now commonly associate Nimrod with someone incompetent or moron. (laughs) And And so that's why I am so 100% fine with Toa Kordak being the original name, and then because they got absolutely mopped, Kordak became... Oh, a slang term to mean desolation. Like I, wow. I can't believe you... Bugs Bunny turning around and saying, "Man, they just got wiped by Zyglag. What a Kordak!" <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. What a Kordak. Like, man, you sense. noobs just got Kordak. Like, <laughs> I, I agree. It's just kind of funny. Like I think of all the other Toa teams we could have the Toa Bullet. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> now, <laughs> just, just from like you just got Kordak. Now I'm just imagining like. A version of the stick bug, the stick bug meme, but mm-hmm. with like the Metro Mantis. <laughs> the legs or the Kordak rockets. No, no, no! It would have to be click. Gee, <laughs> yes. yeah. so why does your mom have him that mooning pose, whatever it was? Gee, <laughs> Conga. Gee, Conga, why does your mom let you have two uh, two desolation blasters? Gee, Court. Gee, Two hands. <laughs> I, I love all this stuff. I love the two stuff hands. We don't like I will about say the one I like definitely regret positively. Binnacle, 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 binnacle. We can I get a thing mm, I did... two in chat? <laughs> <laughs> two. Mm. Mm. Nice. He liked green. He liked uh, green. What I was also going to say is, I would love to have seen him do something with Jovan's team directly, like showing yes. the journey of the mask of life. Joe Biden. <laughs> Boy, what? No. <laughs> I, I zoned out for a second because I've seen James react to the the emo and be like, wait, yes. Joe Biden? What? <laughs> no, the, Joe Biden's team. Do you remember that? With, uh, oh. The first Mask of Life after the Civil oh, War. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, okay. If Joe Biden's team was made entirely of U.S. politicians, who would they be? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Joe Biden! Washington is the leader. <laughs> Let's go, Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, need a Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> Man. Uh, what about you, LJ? Besides two yet, what was one thing you don't like about Bionicle? Tree speak. Yeah. <laughs> oh! huh. Yeah. No, uh, Greg is 100% right. Tree speak is terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, cat, it, cat's, just, cat's least it's favorite. Awful. Oh, sorry. But it's funny. No, it, it's cumbersome. So I was like, there's. Okay, I'm back on Lewis page. Like. It could also be considered culturally insensitive. In some ways, too. Yes, in which I way? could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, especially more so in Menard. Yeah, it, honestly. Yeah, it's like um, mm. yeah. it, it's like hick speak at that point. Really. Yeah, like the, the, way, pe- the, the people with broken like... language that live in yeah. the jungle. You know, like yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and we quick say things, and nobody listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Nobody here <laughs> listens. There you go. Thank yeah. you. Nobody here looks. Nobody. I think I need a. I think I need a toe of the source right now. I think I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe we. I. I don't think that that was the intention. Of course not. For it to no. be. No. Of course that way. not. Nobody. Um, n- nobody goes out and tr- nobody goes out and intends to do a racism. No, some people <laughs> definitely do. Well, some, some people do. Um, <laughs> some it, people do. Yeah, we do not no, associate people. with them. Uh, no, those, uh, but those this, aren't people. It, They've rescinded the rights to be called people at that point. Fair. <laughs> yeah. There you go. In this instance, mm-hmm. I, I definitely look at it more as a dialect. It's a regional dialect. And I, mm-hmm. I can, yeah. I can yeah. get that. I just it, think it's... of all the regional dialects they opted to go with, this was the dumbest one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh... it, by that token, you're saying this is similar to what Creole would be. Using different terms to kind of, like, transition out. Mm-hmm. Is that so how, yeah, how are we? It? How are we looking for time here, real quick? We should probably. We have like thirteen minutes. Yeah, we should probably move Ooh. into reading stuff. Yeah, so. we should probably start reading yeah. off yeah. some of those responses to the survey that we put out there. Absolutely. They call him. They call him. Kate doesn't start. Doesn't start um, streaming until eight. So cats don't give a shit how long we take. Fair enough. Well, okay. I am right, dying well, in this room. It's seventy degrees outside, and I have no AC in this room. <laughs> So take just a, for a brief, uh, just for a brief recap, since uh, yeah. you know not everyone here may know exactly what we were doing, but um, before we recorded this episode, <clears throat> uh, I mean streamed it live like we're doing right now. <laughs> Do you didn't hear that? <laughs> um, we put out a survey for a couple weeks to just get everyone's opinion on what Greg meant to them and how his work affected their lives, and we have like. 40 plus responses to go through we had originally intended on you know putting them all in the episode which in itself was originally supposed to be something entirely different but we're just gonna have to sprinkle we're gonna have to read off just a few of them and sprinkle the rest throughout the day so look forward to seeing more of that throughout all of bionicle day and how i don't know how we'd pronounce the second one (laughs) (laughs) by by nickel day <laughs> we, we put a one in there for the eye <laughs> there you go eight eleven nickel day there yes. you go <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway All before right. we get to that uh, i just want to check does anybody have any uh closing thoughts they want to mention Wait, i would like done? i would like to state a controversial opinion now that there's no time for anyone to argue with me I think Greg did a really good job handling the comma's descent into being a crazy asshole in 2004 and 2005. I, Wait, uh, I agree. Especially that. considering Greg that he was not supposed to be the one to turn. I Wait, agree. You know dot, dot, dot. In the novelization, he yes. sells it like a lot. It's exceptionally well done. Yeah. It Wait, is. Greg handled yeah. it in well. Movie, the movie, on the other not. hand. Yes. Let's yeah. hand. <laughs> Wait, yeah, we can be controversial on this? Okay. The reason cats <laughs> never the reason cats didn't ask Greg personally about Tamaru was because we didn't want to dignify the transphobes by a- asking Greg, Hey Greg, what do you think about, about Tamaru probably being trans or not? 
and he'd be all well, like, I think at uh, one oh, point I don't he care. also mentioned, like, they, I think he specifically mentioned at some point that Matoran don't have, don't really have any assigned quote unquote gender. Yeah. Hmm. So basically, like, like, Tamaru probably is a trans, but fans want to believe, so fuck it. So that's why hmm. we didn't ask. That's yeah. why we didn't ask Greg about it. We didn't mention Tamaru. Well, there you go. Because uh, yeah, times. yeah, fuck, fuck transphobes. Fuck, uh, fuck those trolls that make videos about cats specifically. Uh, and fuck yeah, those okay. Reddit. And fuck that guy on Reddit and his and his weird friends. <laughs> I think we can all agree. <laughs> fuck Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, was, uh, so with that, quite the quite the debacle that was. <laughs> that anyway, was. that that's a story for another time. Trans uh, rights. Can we get into reading some of these quotes then. Hell yeah! Absolutely, sure. Okay, All right, who we... would like to go first? Uh, I think that was me, right? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. First one from Tyler the Contumacious. Ooh, Bionicle was a part of my childhood. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Bionicle was a part of childhood for a lot of people. But for me, it wouldn't be a stretch to say Bionicle was my childhood. Bionicle ran for my entire elementary school career, and throughout that time, I lived and breathed Bionicle. I got as many sets as I could, even when my mom tried to stop me, since I had a tendency of making a mess all over our basement floor. I did the same with the books, too, of course, which also made a mess because I read them so much, the pages started to fall out of some of them. That's I just the scholastic movie. books in general, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. More that favorite. just not happens. The, not the best quality there. Printing but. for five cents, sold for 12 bucks. There you go. <laughs> I got every movie and watched them almost religiously. I babbled about the story and characters I'd fallen in love with to all my friends, even after I knew they were tired of hearing about it. That's a big mood. I just <laughs> couldn't stop. And even now in my 20s, Bionicle is never far from my mind. It means that much to me. This means that one of the greatest influences on my life was Greg Farshti. Greg's writing deeply enriched my life and helped shape me into the person I am today. His work on the series helped me learn to read when I was young and improve my literacy as well as helped me find other worlds to fall in love with. But most importantly, taught me what it means to be a hero and do a good turn for another daily. Emotional moments in the story like Matoro's death, which felt like losing a beloved friend, would also help me learn to cope with loss I would experience later in life. All this and more because of Greg's writing and the Bionicle universe, and I know I'm not the only one. Thank you so much for all you've done, Greg, and I wish you the best. Nice. Hey, Greg, I don't know how often you play video games now. I know you occasionally played WoW back in the day, but if you still do, I'd like to recommend the Xenoblade Chronicles games. <laughs> have been what I gravitated to the past several years. The first game even features a setting where civilizations have settled on the bodies of two dead giant gods which had been locked in combat before they perished. Sounds a bit familiar, doesn't it? Anyway, I'd once again like to thank you for the fantastic work you did and wish you my best. Very there nice. are actually some weird story similarities in Xenoblades, some of there which are, are spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Tyler and Messenac. Um, well. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Messenac. And uh, let's move on to James. You can read the next one. Okay, so this one is from Marie Lum, a.k.a. Puka Noodles. She said, Me and my brother grew up together in a difficult household, and Bionicle is something that we both soul bonded over to get through the hardest times. My brother didn't learn to read for a while, so I would read him the books and comics every night. It was the coolest thing ever. Thank you for helping make something so epic and awesome and wonderful. Thank you so, so much for your amazing work, Greg. I feel like Bionicle completely changed the way my brain processes chemicals, and it's the best thing ever. Hmm. You have to read off the haha -ha at the end. Come on. Haha. -ha. <laughs> makes ha -ha glass. Makes glass. Wait, wait, I got something for this, too. Hold on. I, I, where to put it? But you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about, Swart. You are hot uh, in the memes did today. I put... my, I just wish my meme folder was better organized because it's such a pain in the ass to find them. So what I'm hearing uh, here is August is. 12th, you're reorganizing all your memes. <laughs> <laughs> Me monocle day. Ah, oh, very, very Beautiful. nice. Beautiful. Nice. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for that message, Murray, and thank you for reading it, James. Uh, let's move on then. LJ, you've got the next one. All right. 
So this is from Sakota. Thank you so much, Greg, for all the fantastic work you did on my two favorite themes, Ninjago and, of course, Bionicle. Your stories expanded these fantasy worlds so much more and filled them with interesting and exciting stories that we keep talking about today. Even years later, you stuck around with the community, answered questions, and even helped with the contests, something we should truly never take for granted. And we are all so incredibly lucky that we got these opportunities. Your work will forever influence the way I look at world building, fantasy stories, and writing. Thank you so much, Greg, and I can't wait to read whatever you will work on in the future. Fantastic. Nice. Thank you very, very much, nice. Dakota. And LJ. <laughs> That's a wonderful little message. I, I think all of us should uh, w would do well to read whatever Greg has next. Of I, course. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, as I said one. earlier, I, re I personally do really enjoy what he has going on that new story. I hope it does mm. evolve into something good for him. Yeah, it's shaping up to be something quality. One mm. day, one day we hope that one day we hope to read more of Greg books. One day mm. we hope to have a bookshelf full of books that we have read with our eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay then. Uh, next up, Swirt, if you would please. Absolutely. All right. This one is from Chris Evans, aka AZ Blue. He writes, "Greg's work through the Bionicle books and comics was one of the first things to really inspire me to write." <clears throat> Getting to interact with him, ask for writing advice, and learn from his experiences was a major turning point for me. Just like my f other favorite authors, my writing owes its existence to you. Maybe someday, if you see a fantasy novel by AZ Blue at a store, you'll pick up the book and know that it was your work on Bionicle that helped me inspire it, or that helped inspire it. Sorry. Just put the word Bionicle on the back on the back on the author blurb in the author blurb of the back cover, and we'll buy it immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris, and thank you for reading it, Swit. Um, all right then. Uh, next up, we have Wim. Can you talk about your one, please? Sure. Um, this is from Nathaniel. <clears throat> the Bionicle storyline is what first inspired a love of fantasy that has stuck with me my whole life. It was really my first exposure to the concept of world building, and to this day I am constantly blown away by the sheer volume of stories that exist in the universe, even divorced from the ones written to accompany the toys. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. That's a nice Very one. Nice. Short and sweet. Very nice. I like it. <laughs> Very nice. Good job, Nathaniel, and uh, thank you, Wynn. <clears throat> okay, uh, next one then. Uh, Liam, it's your turn. Oh, Okay. Uh, this one is, I apologize if I mispronounce this, uh, J. Genem. Ever since I was three or four years old, Bionicle had been an influence on my life. The first thing I remember seeing in my life was a Toa canister with Pohatu printed on the label, and ever since then I'd been enthralled by the world of Bionicle. When I was old enough to read, it was words that were written by Greg Farshti that brought the world of Bionicle to life. And every time a book fair came around, it was all about Bionicle books for me. From the chapter books to the lore guides, Rahi Beasts, and the comic books, whatever I could get my little hands on. Even today, I still re retain some of the books I read, the ones that I didn't read so much that the pages started falling out. And I look back on them with fondness, as they're my treasures. Greg, you've touched the lives of many children with the world you helped bring to life, the wonderful world of Bionicle, and now many of these children have moved on to adulthood. Some are struggling, some are st some are striving? I, I think uh, they meant to say thriving? I don't know. But I'm sure I speak for all of them when I say thank you for my childhood, Greg. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. Your duty is done, and now you'll find a new destiny. Yeah, I love that. That is beautiful. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Ganem. And uh, thank you, Liam. All right, hmm. next one up is... Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so here we have one from Connor Williams. And Connor says, Greg's Bionicle books were my favorite books growing up. When I read them, I was totally engrossed and absorbed in the world. They inspired my own cre inner creativity. Without them, I would not be the person I am today. There we are. Very That's nice. That short and sweet one. Nice. Thank yeah. you very much, Connor. And let's see, last up then, Gonal. Sure, this one comes from Barney. Bionicle and the stories around it were an escape for me from my whole childhood, and I think it still is to this day. No matter how bad things get, it is always comforting. 
Beautiful. Very, yeah, very beautiful. Agree. Wise words. Very nice to end and, on. And before we finish up, actually, we do have a couple of video responses that we wanted to show off. So mm. if you would take a moment, here are those. I just want to thank Greg for his immense work for the Bionicle franchise. And he has inspired me in doing a writing course myself and become an author. So I personally thank him for what he's done and aspiring me to do fan fiction and create bionic and create bionicle content of my own. And um, I, w I also wish him all the best for the future and for his career. Hi. I'm Daniel, or as I'm known online, Aurora Nuva, and this is my thank you to Greg Farshti. Bionicle is, without a doubt, the favorite story from my childhood, and Greg, your books are a huge part of what made it so special to me, because the story was the best part of the whole thing. Bionicle worked because it was so rich, and it was a world that the audience could dive deep into and immerse ourselves in. And that immersion, that richness, the details to the story concepts is what you provided. The characters we saw blurbs of online, you gave rich and compelling arcs. Which I now realize must have been a Herculean task, given how many of them there were. I loved reading them. They brought the Bionicle world to life. Every time one of your books came out, I would rush to the bookstore to see if I could find it, because I just had to know what would happen next. In addition to your writing and attention to detail you gave the world, I, I think that I'm, what I'm most thankful for is the real care that you gave to the fans. I mean, you really kept up with us and met our passion with your time, which is really sweet considering how much of that was a labor of love outside of your actual duties at LEGO. I know that we could be a bit much sometimes, but... I'm so glad that you still showed us that love and an amazing amount of patience. I don't know if you remember, but we actually met one time when I was a kid. I believe it was in the summer of 2008, and you were hosting a meet and greet slash trivia contest in Connecticut. I was so excited when I heard about a chance to meet my favorite author that my, my mom actually booked us a flight to Connecticut to go. It took us a little bit to find the library it was at, but I remember coming and seeing you, sitting with maybe two dozen other kids on the floor, all excited to ask you questions and hear what new was happening in the story. I actually won the trivia contest, which was really fun, but even more cool, honestly, was coming up to talk to you and even getting some of you to sign some of my books. It, I actually ended up getting two things signed, because the first time I accidentally asked you to sign one of the books you didn't write. <laughs> But it was so great to get a chance to just see and talk to you. The whole trip ended up being just an amazing little adventure that I had with my mom, and I'm so happy that I got that chance. I'm sorry to hear that your time at LEGO is over, and I hope that they showed you at least some of the appreciation that you deserved while you were there, because you were a big part of saving their butts. Greg? You are the author of my favorite books. The world you brought to life inspired me and countless others. Your writing caused me to pursue writing myself. And even now, me and thousands of other fans continue to talk about and analyze and debate the books that you wrote because we love them. So thank you, Greg. From all of us gathered friends to you, the true chronicler who recorded this legend for all of us to enjoy. So, uh, yeah, thank you to the other Ibrahim and Hiro Hiro Nuva. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, so That's I awesome. believe that brings us to an end. Um, just want to say to all of you, thank you very much for coming and uh, talking about Greg and everything else that we talked about today. And everything else. And yep. if you're out there... <laughs> The ghost of Levi, we salute you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you all for having uh, me and LJ on. This was a blast. Yeah. yeah th thanks for having me on. It, 
I don't get and to talk to people very often anymore. Mm, I've been too busy. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Cats barely, cats barely, barely talk to anyone except ourselves these days. My only Fair. friends are totally heads you. now. Anyway, <laughs> hope, to hopefully the, to in the future to... we can do some of some stuff like this a little more. Anyway, anyway who knows about yes. gathered friends? Gathered friends you know, finale like number coming. four. <laughs> I was gonna say it keeps <laughs> coming back. This is the second finale now. Oh, the it's third. Gathered the third. friends, more it, more like gathered in. No, <laughs> called... this is the, technically this is the fourth finale because That's... we had the finale to G one. Then we had the finale to G2. Then we had the last ride, which was another finale to G2. They're called epilogues, the you final, skinny and now bitch! And the final part, <laughs> They're called epilogues, you skinny-ass bony fuck bitch! <laughs> These are the voyages of the Starship <laughs> Bionicle. <laughs> it's continuing mission, whether we like it or not, to explore strange new characters. <laughs> and go... This one to goes... seek out this... new right... This one okay. goes Who knows? out. Maybe in the future we'll have gathered friends for Vision of the Great Beings. This one goes <laughs> out to the Bionicle fa to the Bionicle faithful. Stay beautiful. Bang. Yeah. For that Bang. is the way of the Bionicle. Yeah. yeah. Until G3 Ooh. is announced. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that right now. <laughs> G3 yeah. is driven not by toys, but by we, NFTs. We oh, live in it. We live in it. We live in it. There's an old saying that nothing is ever really gone if somebody remembers it. It is certainly true of Bionicle, which is still remembered with affection after all these years. I hope it would be true of me as well. Bionicle was a big risk. It came out at a time when Lego Company was not doing well, and there were always people within the company who felt it wasn't really Lego, despite being made from Technic pieces. It managed to be the savior of the company, and the red-haired stepchild at the same time. It survived and thrived because the fans believed in it, of the potential for the sets and the story. There has never been a LEGO theme, before or since, in which the creativity of the team that worked on it was so wedded to the feelings of the fans. There has never been a theme that benefited so much or even solicited a give and take with the people who were buying the sets or reading the story. Bionicle was a voyage we all went on together, and that is what made it special. Today, it is the fans who keep the spirit of the Toa alive. It's the fans who have given Bionicle a destiny that goes beyond just a mention in a DK book or a nostalgic tribute set. Bionicle isn't gone because of you, and only because of you. And with every mock, every piece of fanfiction, every discussion on a forum, you find the power all over again. Greg Farshtein.